So psychology has traditionally focused on behavior. Um, and sometimes, you know, our common sense notions of behavior uh, or intuition regarding behavior uh, and expectations about behavior is completely incorrect, right? And a thorough scientific investigation can uncover some rather surprising facts. Um, so, for example, um, there is what's known as confirmation bias, which is, you know, sometimes referred to as the mother of all biases. It's the tendency to seek out evidence that supports our hypotheses and neglect or distort evidence uh, that contradicts them. Your textbook goes into some, um, you know, uh, detail on uh, confirmation bias. Um, there is, for example, the Wasson selection task, which I'd like you to take a look at. Um, there is a link up on our uh, course website um, that goes into some detail, and you can try it yourself. But it is an example of how you there are certain um, uh, approaches or heuristics that you're going to apply. You just assume that this is the way it's going to be. And actually, there's something a little bit um, more complex about uh, what the task involves uh, that you've got to sort of figure out. Um, your confirmation bias sort of leads you typically in one direction uh, because you're assuming it's going to be a certain way, and it turns out it's actually quite different. Um, there's also, from your textbook, uh, Snyder and Swan in 1978, researchers ask students to find out if another student is an extrovert or an introvert. Uh, if they were given the hypothesis that the student was extroverted, uh, students actually picked questions. They came up with questions that encouraged extroverted responses. Um, like, you know, what would you do if you wanted to liven things up, you know, at a bar or something like that? And, uh, you know, people who asked the questions actually behaved in a more extroverted fashion, which actually elicited more extroverted sort of responses. So um, uh, there's a certain confirmation bias. If you're told something, you will, you know, tend to believe it, right? Uh, can you guys imagine other examples of confirmation bias? I'd like you to think about that. Uh, do you think confirmation bias affects scientists who are conducting research? Uh, and how do you guard against um, confirmation bias? Um, so I like this as a quote that your textbook uh, brings up from uh, the psychologist Edward Bradford Titchener. Uh, know all theories, love a few, but wed none, right? Uh, there's also what we call disconfirmation bias, which is the tendency to seek out evidence inconsistent with a hypothesis that we do not believe and neglect evidence that is consistent with it. Um, and then there is um, something we refer to as belief perseverance. Uh, this is made worse by confirmation bias, but it's the tendency to stick to our initial beliefs despite significant evidence to the contrary that arises after the fact, right? It's kind of like, don't confuse me with the facts. Uh, I'm sure we all know people, and you know we may have seen this in ourselves under certain circumstances. Uh, it's often very hard to give up uh, cherished, long-held notions or beliefs. Um, there's a study that your textbook mentions, uh, the Lee Ross et al. study from 1975, where researchers were asked, they asked students to actually inspect suicide notes uh, and determine which were real, and 25 of the ones that were presented were real, and 25, it turns out, were made up. And they told half that they did very well, they were very good at picking the actual suicide notes, and the other half that they did poorly. Uh, but the feedback was actually totally dependent. It had nothing to do with whether they picked you know, the accurate notes, the actual notes or not. Uh, but even after the students knew that their feedback was totally bogus, uh, even after they were told this explicitly, uh, they rated their own ability based upon that feedback. You know, their beliefs, your beliefs endure, right? If you, you know, think something about yourself, it'll endure sometimes despite evidence to the contrary. This is actually related to something called cognitive flexibility, which is um, uh, assessed actually uh, in terms of, you know, neuroscience actually um, by a task that's called the Wisconsin Card Sort Task, uh, or the WCST. Um, and, you know, your ability to sort of shift from one set of beliefs to another, to change your behavior based upon changing circumstances, is actually largely dependent upon networks that form in frontal lobes of the brain, in concert with other regions of the brain. But the frontal lobes are pretty critically involved in what we call shifting set from one set of beliefs or approaches to another. Um, and this Wisconsin card sort task, they'll, you're presented with um, cards and you're supposed to sort them. You're supposed to you know, put this one with this one and this one with that one. And there's usually some rule. You're supposed to you know, pick the cards that are you know, have two items on them, for example. Or, you know, um, or only pick the red card, cards with red items on them or something. And people try it and they get feedback and you know, they start to get better at it. And then they, they, they think they know the rule. They figured it out. And then the rule changes.
and then you have to see what you do. Like, how do you do? You, do you keep persisting with the initial, you know, uh, rule that you had uh, you know, determined, or do you shift to the you know new set of circumstances? And actually, um, there are certain periods of development where you know people are not very good at shifting set, uh, and that involves very young children. Uh, but also, actually, interestingly, um, as people get older, it's harder for them to sort of shift set from one set of rules to another. They have certain expectations, and despite all evidence to the contrary that things are changing, their beliefs persist and endure, and they don't change. Um, and people with damage to their frontal lobes also um, have difficulty with the Wisconsin card sort task. They also have difficulty sort of shifting set. They tend to have, you know, uh, persistent beliefs that do not change despite, you know, significant um, evidence to the contrary. A quote from your textbook that actually I think uh, applies here is, psychological science is a prescription for humility.